Welcome back to the British Motor Museum in Gaydon. And here we have a 1953 Morris Minor fire engine. Doesn't really look like a fire engine, but that's the way things were back then. But this is a commercial vehicle. And this week, we're going to talk about the ERCV, which to you and me is otherwise known as the bin lorry. So, Paul, how is electrification of that familiar suburban form of, 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 of refuse collection going? It's going really well, Quentin. We've got uh, operations with a number of councils up and down the country. And it's, it's important to recognise that actually this is one of the easier areas for us to electrify with guaranteed routes um, and, and back to base operations. It makes it a real good opportunity for electrification. And you've cut down on all that idling as well if you electrify. Absolutely, because you don't need to use the diesel to generate all the power for the various different operations that happen on a bin lorry. And you've gone to a council to see it happening, haven't Absolutely. You? We're going to go and check out Newport Council and see how Vital EV are helping those guys electrify their bin lorries. So, not that you'd know it from standing right here, but we are at Newport County Council Waste and Recycling Centre here in the heart of Wales. And it is exciting to be able to talk to Liam Campbell about how we at Vital EV Solutions have been helping the council electrify their RCVs or refuse collection vehicles. That's taken a few attempts. <laughs> anyway, Liam, tell me, what, what, do we, what do we behold? What we behold? We behold the C Series. So we've got the Hub and Spoke, Kempower Hub and Spoke system here. So we've got the C Series CPU. Uh, it's 200 kilowatts. CPU, what does CPU stand for? Sorry, in layman's terms, centralised power unit, ah. basically the hub of right. the system. So it's, uh, it's got four power modules, four 50 kilowatt power modules, giving up to 200 kilowatts in total. Okay. Uh, it's an 800 volt system, perfect for the RCVs, which work on 600, 700 volt system, right. uh, and that distributes out to these. So we've got eight uh, charging bays here, so four dual port uh, S-series satellite chargers. So, so the power goes from here and we can see actually that the, we don't have groundworks here. They've come up with a clever solution to save digging up the ground. They've gone up and over. Let's go and have a look at the S-series that they're taking the power to. So how much power again? 200 kilowatts, right? 200 kilowatts. Now each of these uh, cables is rated uh, for 140 kilowatts. So you, you, in this uh, circumstance, you're limited by the cable. Right. So it's 140 kilowatts. Okay. Uh, and like I say, you've got eight charging bays here. So if all eight bays were in use, uh, you'd be limited to 25 kilowatts each. Um, but they have dynamic power management. So if uh, seven of those vehicles go away, there's one left um, uh, charging, all that 140 kilowatts would be uh, distributed to that one charging bay. But I suppose the good news is here, if you had a requirement for 200 kilowatts, all you're doing is changing a couple of cables, right? That's it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you want to scale, the beauty of the Ken Power system and the Vital EV system is it's scalable and modular as well. So if you want to go above and beyond that, you can, you can go up to these cables. We've got water cools cables now that can do up to 400 uh, kilowatts. Well, and I suppose the only, the only thing that we'd need to do, which in this situation we can do, is add another cabinet to the, to the C-Series. Absolutely, so modular and scalable, you specify additional 50 kilowatt power modules, which can distribute out to more uh, S-series and also increase the power of the system as well. See, isn't that fantastic? We, we've got an opportunity here to, to get started with what we need for today. But as time goes by, we can add to it as our requirement goes. That's a really unique feature of the Kempower equipment and something that makes it so logical to go with right yeah yeah absolutely and it, it's great for for fleets that are just starting out on their uh, electrification journey uh, like a lot of councils are doing and especially in the heavy truck industry where yeah. the immediate requirement for electrification is actually quite low right but they they want to cost effectively scale so they don't want to be putting in uh, a very expensive charging system and then doubling up on the cost every time that they want to put in more charges yeah uh, this allows you to do it at, it tell tell us to, to the speed of your electrification. So as you can see this is quite a large site and if you've got vehicles on charge you don't want to have to be running out to them to see exactly where they're at. So the great news is that all of the Vital EV provided Kempower equipment comes with 
ChargeEye. ChargeEye, a software system giving insight to the fleet manager as to the state of charge, all the charging sessions and everything that they need to know about all the energy going into the vehicles. Loving these pre-war petrol pumps, particularly the price if you look down here, a third <laughs> of a pence a gallon just shows how long ago it was. But petrol pumps are fixed. Now, Kempower's hub and spoke system allows councils to have the flexibility that they need with electrification. Tell us how that works. So you deploy the cabinet and then the, uh, the S-series, the satellites, and then you can upgrade that as time goes by. So you don't need to make all the investment up front you've got the opportunity to get started and build as you go. And what other ways can you help councils? So we also provide a movable charger. Newport Council actually started out with this movable charger. And so let's go and see how that movable charger can work within that environment. What we've seen already today is, is a half a million pound piece of kit. Uh, in an RCV, a, re a refuse collection vehicle. And when you're deploying that kind of money on that, you don't want to get it wrong on your charges, no, do you? absolutely. You don't want to be caught short on the charges. So, you know, it's, it's an investment that's worthwhile. So uh, how, how did we help um, the guys here at Newport City Council or County Council uh, get started? So we started with the T-Series, which is oh, well, quite a convenient place series. over here. Yeah. And here it is, the yeah. original T-Series that, that we uh, Where it started all began. with. Yeah, fantastic. So, and looking, looking uh, like it's had a life, but that's great. It's, it's outdoors, so I'm guessing it works in all weathers, because we've had weather. Absolutely. So it's IP54 rated. These things are built in uh, Finland. The, um, they're built to endure the harsh winters of right. the uh, Nordic regions. Yeah. So here in South Wales, that's uh, that's a piece of cake for it. So um, this came first, basically. No, absolutely, yeah. So it started with this, uh, the T-Series. And that's the way a lot of fleets have started their journey with us. Yeah. They've gone for the mobile solution. Um, obviously, you can see that the council here have uh, specified are specially built, uh, specially crafted. Um, crash frames. Crash, uh, well, we call them safety frames. Oh, safety but, frames. Po positive, positive <laughs> enforcement. Uh, yeah, so we've got the uh, T-Series safety frame here, uh, which reduces the uh, risk of theft and, and also damage as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the T-Series has been a, a great introduction for a lot of uh, fleets. And I guess as, as they scale from the S-Series they've got, what we're clear about also is that the other half of the, the depot here is also that it's got all the... Um, things in place to add a new series season and S series yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then this gets to fill in the gaps really brilliantly. Yeah, absolutely. So if you, uh, they've actually got two uh, T series here now because yeah. the, the charging requirements have actually outgrown this system already. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they're on their way now to the uh, the second system as well, which is the um, same as this one here. So it's yeah. a C and S series system. Yeah. So. But I love I love the T series in that you can just kind of if a if a truck and you don't we've just seen the how big the things are we don't want to have to move them every time no absolutely It'd be nice to get the you don't want to be playing two. musical trucks uh, no. around the depot so this is great you can just put obviously we've got the uh, the safety frame here you just put the um, you know pump truck or yeah. a forklift move it around site nice and easy or it's even got the high up lifting point as well so if you've got yeah. a, um, a something that can yeah, yeah high yeah. up yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what an introduction to charging for, for the guys here because of course the operators won't have ever really dealt with this type of thing before but it looks like the Kempower system has made it easy not only easy for today but easy for the future I've got high hopes to see the whole fleet here going electric on their RCV delivery fantastic so it's been great to be here at Newport City Council seeing what Vital EV have been doing to help transition the ICE RCVs to electric. And what I'm really chuffed about is knowing that the kit that we've been putting in here is going to be able to move with the Newport City Council as they add more and more electric RCVs to their fleet. Staying with them on the journey, scaling up to meet the new demand. Fantastic work from Vital EV Solutions. So, Paul, I'm sure there are people watching right now who say, well, look, leave our bin lorries alone. Why change it? They do a perfectly great job. Why do we need to electrify them? 
There is a reason, isn't there? Absolutely. I mean, the air quality is one of the critical reasons why we're doing this whole thing in the first place. And our towns and cities have bin lorries operating in them alongside of our children, outside of our schools, and those vehicles are idling. They're emitting tons of CO2, which is polluting. And this is a great way to drive that down. So this is a really important urban air quality initiative right in the heart of the community that's flexible and scalable. Absolutely, and, and vitally we are helping councils migrate their vehicles to electric by giving them the ability to try it out and then a really flexible and scalable solution for the future of electrification. So I'm a council person, I want to know more about this, what do I do? So if you need to know more about electrifying your bin lorries and other council fleet, then head on over to our website, which you can find with a simple Google search or vital-ev.co.uk and find out all the information you need there.